Hi there, my name is James, and I'm the Developer Advocate at Tina. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can get started with Tina in minutes. By the end of this video, you'll be able to edit your content using Tina CMS, a more traditional editing experience that requires minimal setup. So if you're ready to get started with Tina, let's dig into some code. So here we have the Next.js blog starter. It comes with a few posts here in a markdown file and everything else is handled for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement Tina without having to change any of the actual code here, we'll only have to implement some Tina code. So first in your terminal, you're going to want to write MPX at Tina CMS slash CLI at latest init. And that will initialize all the code we need for Tina. It will install all of the packages. It'll ask us if we want to override our app.js and then install a few demo pieces for us to use. Then once we understand how it works, we can edit the schema file that Tina uses alongside our GraphQL to provide our editing experience. So here we have the question, do we want to override our app.js? Because we're using a simple Next.js starter blog that has a basic app.js, it's okay to override it. So we're gonna hit yes for this, and now we're ready to go. So what happened here? Well, first we added this new .tina file here, and inside of that, there is a schema with a basic schema defined. In here, tells us all of the collections that we may need to use for Tina. Right now we have a title and a text area for a blog post. Then down here is our Tina config. So as you can see here, we have the URL that we're going to be using. Now when Tina launches locally, it will be using this GraphQL endpoint on localhost 4001. When you deploy this to Tina Cloud, we will implement this part for you. All you need to do is make sure your branch is the correct one that you want to be working with and that you insert your Tina client ID. So now we've talked about that, let's talk about what we need to do here. So we now have this content posts here and it contains a demo and we can test this all out. So inside of our package JSON, you'll see that we have these three new commands, tina-dev, tina-build and tina-start. Now this is what we're going to be using and essentially what it does is it starts our GraphQL server and then does next dev. The final thing to highlight is the app.js. As you can see from this app.js, we have wrapped it in Tina and Tina is being implemented from a Tina dynamic provider. So everything is good to go. So if we write yarn Tina dev, that will launch our application server as well as our GraphQL server. And then we can launch our browser and take a look at what it's doing. So here's our blog starter. If you've never seen this before, it's just a collection of different posts. And obviously this source code is available on GitHub and it's provided by Next.js. Now, if we go to slash admin and hit enter, we'll get placed into this Tina screen. So if you click edit with Tina, you'll then be placed in this CMS screen. Now this may look very familiar to you if you've ever used a CMS before. So we've got this collections here and this contains all of the collections in your schema, which we'll dive into in a minute. Then we also have this media manager and that allows you to upload your images to Cloudinary, ready to use with a blog post, but we'll cover that in a separate video. So let's talk about blog posts. So if you click this blog post, you'll see that there's this file name. It says, hello world. It gives you the extension and what kind of template it was. Now, if we flip back to our VS code, we can just take a quick look at where this is coming from. We flip back in the code and you can see in this schema file here, we have blog posts, content slash posts, and then that file is being loaded in here, hello world. So now we're back here, we can click this and now we can actually start editing the content. We can type whatever we want in this title field or whatever we want in here. So we could just say, welcome. to our block, hit save. And now that content has been saved into our markdown file. So if we go back here, welcome to our blog, the title is still vote for Pedro. So now we kind of understand how this is all working. We should talk about 
how can we do this for this code here? So I've opened up one of these markdown files and we're going to talk about the content. So we have this front matter here, and then we also have the body. Now, Tina, to be able to edit all of these fields and grab all of the data, we're going to need to create a field for each of these. So we need one for title, excerpt, cover image, date, author, then the author's name, picture, the OG image, and the URL. We don't really need to create one for the body because it's already there from our previous options. So if you open up this schema file here, we can define in this part here, instead of using the demo content, we can use the content that was provided. So we can do underscore posts, hit save, and we'll just go ahead and close out our server. And then all we need to do is start creating all of the different options for our blog posts. So we have the title, we need the excerpt, so we can do open set of parentheses here, type string. We'll give it a label and we'll give that label excerpt. And then we'll give it a name of excerpt. And before I move on, just to quick note that this name here is the GraphQL name, and this is what your users would see when they're editing. So this needs to match what is in your front matter. So it needs to be lowercase exer, otherwise it won't work. So now we can kind of copy this, drop it down and change the name from exer to cover image. So this will be our cover image and cover image and we can do this all the way along until we get to everything that's in here so we can do one for date so i'll just drop this one in then we need to talk about this author one because the author one's a bit different it's not just a standard string it is in fact an object that contains name and picture so we can also handle that with tina we can do type object, label, author, name, author. And then inside of that, we need all the fields. So then we create something called fields, which is an array. And then inside that is where we can put say for example, the name. So we can just do a string and put name in here. And then we could do string and picture, which would be the picture. And similarly, we can do the same thing for the URL for the image, because remember the image OG image is actually an object that holds the URL. So we can just copy this down here, drop in there and take this field out and just give it the correct label. So the label will be OG image. This will be OG image. And then we'll set this to URL and this to URL. And then we hit comma here and hit save. And that's it. Now everything here is available to be used with Tina. So if we launch our Tina server again, so yarn Tina dev, and then go back to our admin screen, we should be able to edit all of this content for the Next.js blocks. So as you can see now, we have three file names instead of just one. We have dynamic routing, hello world, and preview. And if we click on one of these, this content is now editable. So we can change this to hello from Tina, hit save. And now that's been saved. And if we log out, and go back to our site, you can see now, hello from Tina. So now we can start editing our blog posts without having to implement contextual editing.